Trails drags on and on. In the Western world, we associate beauty with the everlasting or with the eternal. We can find an example of this expression in Shakespeare's poem, So long as men can breathe and eyes can see, so long lives this and gives life to thee. Whereas in the Japanese, in the Ise Monogatari, the poet says it is because the cherry blossom is fleeting, it's beautiful. And we should admire it for that very fleeting beauty. Western art feels rather logical and calculated and it's very symmetrical. It almost seems to be reaching for heaven. But Japanese art has a lot of respect for nature and it allows the unbalanced and the asymmetrical. And it also leaves blank spaces and allows for instantaneous things. Within Japanese art, there's a great respect for natural materials. Another very important aspect of Japanese beauty is the love of saying things indirectly. A novelist couldn't say directly to the person that he loved, I love you. So instead he said, the moon is beautiful because I'm watching it with you. The Japanese crafts people have a really great respect for the materials that they use. So it's almost like uh, the tools that they use and the materials and the craftsmen themselves become one together to produce a beautiful object. In the 19th century, Japanism spread around Europe and then later to the world. And the famous uh, ukiyo-e artists, such as uh, Hokusai, presented us with a totally new way of looking at the world. For example, in Hokusai's The Great Wave, we can see a complete transformation of perspective and foreshortening, which had been the background of Western painting for 500 years. Through this revolutionary new way of looking at the world, the Japanese added a totally new dimension to the way in which we perceive things. Before the Victorian period, there were only natural dyes, and yet the kimono of ancient Japan were dyed in the most beautiful colors. Sometimes, in order to obtain those deep reds and other colors, it was necessary to dye the fabric up to 40 times. And that tradition of using natural dyes still continues in the kimono world. Uh, I know people who go out in the early morning to gather the camellia petals that have just dropped that morning and use those for their dye to make their kimono. It's such a beautiful expression of respect for nature. When we think of a classic in literature, we think of something that will be read in 100 years or even 1,000 years. Something that provides a mirror of society and something of eternal value for us. Even if 100 years passed, it will still feel fresh and new. Silk is a very, very important part of Japanese culture. We can find examples in the ancient times in the Shosoin. And even in the palace today, there's a special place where the empress cultivates silk. So I was truly delighted to see that you had decided to make silk a central motif in the design of these watches. 
Uh, Japanese silk is very fine and the quality control is really good. Silk, for me, it's almost sacred in its purity and it's also a very practical fabric because it's warm, it's strong, but it has the most beautiful shine. In the kimono world, our kimono teaches us how to move. If I hurry too much or take too big steps, my kimono will tell me. It talks to me and helps me to move more gracefully and be more gentle with people. It's very gentle with soft curves and the face has a refined sheen like crepe silk. And the metal bracelet just reminds me of uh, weaving of obi. It's really beautiful. But wearing this one, it feels so soft, supple, comfortable and graceful. And I feel that even after a hundred years, it will remain new, but also 